to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good afternoon. This is great. I think we have a quorum. Great. Thank you. So we have uh, a potential member, Kathy, Kathy Conlin. I haven't met you yet. Where are you? Welcome. I'm glad you're here. You're going to be at a fun meeting today. We're giving prizes at the end. <laughs> and we have two guests. Michael Griffin, am I saying your name what right? Welcome. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Michael, it's time for you to fill out an application. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have Paula Kaw as a guest. We hope we see a lot more of her. Uh, she expresses better half. Our cup money this month is for the turkey giveaway with the Islamic Center. It's a cooperative project we have with them uh, for Thanksgiving. And then I am to remind you of the YWCA Day Center Ribbon Cutting and Grand Opening Friday, November 22nd from 2 to 5 p.m. 1309 Southwest Hunt 2. And, uh, you know, this is our project. This is the project that we help support, we help fund, get the global grant for. So uh, I hope that you're able to make it to the ribbon cutting and the grant opening. And then uh, there were sign up sheets for our covered in coats service project. We tried to send out a sign up through Club Runner and it wasn't the most successful endeavor. So I do have sign-up sheets for you over there. Uh, we have three different dates. Prime, Pine Ridge Prep Tuesday, next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Quincy School on Wednesday at 1 p.m. And Williams Magnet School on the following Tuesday, the 25th. So uh, it's a good way to get a service project in and to make a difference. <clears throat> then we'll ask Mark to come up for the election. Thank you, President Joni. Well, champions of champions and uh, leaders of leaders, I've got good news and I've got bad news for you today. The bad news is you don't have too long with me on the podium. <laughs> the good news is, if you're ready for somebody else to be on the podium, this is my last official duty as past president. <laughs> Applause is not welcome. <laughs> I do want to say thank you for the uh, privilege and the honor of serving you and our club. I really do appreciate uh, the opportunity and I won't forget it. Every year at this time, it's fun to uh, look to the future and think about uh, how great our Rotary Club will continue to be and uh, how it will get even greater. Uh, this year, we have an excellent <coughs> candidate uh, slate for you. Uh, please stand and remain standing when I uh, read your name. Sam <coughs> Martindale for President, Marie Pico for Vice President-Elect, Steve Knoll for Vice President. Steve is out of town and sent his regrets. He's uh, has a daughter who got uh, unexpected surgery and is attending to her out of state. So, uh, Secretary Gar Carol Jordan, Deborah Ricks for Treasurer, and Russ Cobb for Sergeant at Arms. And then um, for your club directors, we have Cody Fredrickson, Allison Marker, and Colleen Jamison. And then for the Topeka Rotary Foundation, Todd Payne for a first term, and a second term, Cherry George and Lon Lewis. Please give a hearty round of applause for this group of candidates. <laughs> Who here is proud of your Rotary service? So who here believes that he or she has been in Rotary longer than any other person at your table? Raise your hand. 
<laughs> Congratulations. You you are table captains for this voting process and you have a very hard job. Please pass out the ballots on your table. As those of you who have been in the club for a little while know, there is one wrinkle in this. Everyone on the slate is running unopposed except for the five past presidents. And so per our bylaws, we have a nominating committee every year that's made up of your immediate past president, your president, your president-elect, and then two of the past presidents from the last five past presidents, most recent past presidents. So if you would look right in the middle of that section, it says nominating committee for 2021 on your ballot. It is very, very important that you vote for two and only two of those five members. So pick two of, of those five members and be sure to vote for two of them and no more than two of them on that. And when you've completed your voting, please pass your ballots to your table captains. Thank you, table captains, for your loyal service and your legacy to Rotary. And then Russ Cobb and I are going to pick up all these ballots along with some help from Curtis Steen here, it looks like, when we're done. And um, we will tally all these votes and let you know the results at the end of the meeting today. Again, thank you for all you do and thank you for an opportunity to call you a friend and a fellow Rotarian. We have extra bucks for the time on tape short. Each person get a ballot. Mark, did you have any? We have one table <coughs> short one. Um, we might have, let's see, anybody have any extra? We got, we got here. There you go. Okay. So raise your hand if you haven't got the ballot yet. Or need a ballot. This is not voting often and voting early. Thank you all.
addition to electing officers for the 2020-21 year, we are also going to review our financials with you and evaluate the sustainability of our club. This is nuts and bolts stuff. It's not very much fun and it is necessary. So I commend you for coming here today so that we could have a forum to elect people and also to talk about looking to the future of our club. Your attention and input is valuable and makes a difference <coughs> as our club looks to the future and moves forward. At the end of the meeting, we will have some surprises. So we will start out, I hope that Deborah's not <coughs> to talk about the financial statement here. The share Yeah, I'm just getting out on these. I figured that's a good way to start the treasurer report. <laughs> Are you needing a seat? <laughs> Deborah Ricks is our treasurer and she's been working this year in tr transferring our financial system from uh, an independent QuickBook system to an online QuickBook system and also interfacing it with Club Run. So with that she will share with you our financial status. First off, I want to thank Kathleen Marker for her service as treasurer this past year. She has made a transition very easy for me and um, a pleasure to take over. So thank you, Kathleen, for your service. Um, very much so. So um, if you refer to the screen, you'll see nothing. So you get to just hear me talk about financial statements, which are super fun. Okay, so um, I took over in the fall and um, as I look at um, what, what we've done, I'm going to give you a snapshot of what we collectively have done. Um, for the uh, period, which was our fiscal year, July 18th through June 30th, basically our club broke even, um, which is great. So we covered all, our, all of our expenses. But um, to sustain our club, we're finding that that maybe isn't exactly what we want to do. So, um, especially when we look at the, uh, the fiscal year beforehand, which was uh, 17 through 18, for that, for that fiscal year, uh, we netted about $27,000. So, we're looking at a couple things to um, uh, make sure that our club is, stays on top of its financial statements, both income and expenses. And to that end, you've probably seen that you're getting a reoccurring invoice statement. Um, that's being set up on a QuickBooks <coughs> online system so that um, you'll get regular billings and um, they'll be billed two weeks before the quarter ends, which you probably have all seen. And I appreciate the fact that you guys have responded so well to the online paying system. And hopefully, you know, it's been easy for you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, uh, so that's one thing that we're doing because um, as we look at our budget for 2019-20, we basically have a break-even budget. And what we're doing that is we're predicating that on 175 paying members. Um, we also are predicating that on um, a grant from the district to fund our community service projects which ED has already done and we received, and that amount is $10,000. We're also looking for about um, $9,500 coming from our fundraising events, um, in particular the, the trivia event in February, so I hope that you all participate in that. But what we need to know is that um, it takes all of us to make our club work. Um, that means, uh, paying our bills on time, that means uh, participating in lots of different ways. 
we want to make sure that our club is sustainable and uh, for the future. And so I um, welcome any questions. I know that I've kind of broad brushed things since we don't have numbers per se to look at. If you would like a copy of the financial statements, please let me know after the meeting or email me and I'd be glad to distribute that. So are there any questions? All right. It must have been a brilliant presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for issues were and see what's going on and, and see what we need to change to make it go forward. So, and before I forget, Stan, could you go ahead and count for me because I haven't got that done yet. And since I'm talking, I'm not going to count and talk at the same time. Thanks. Sorry, I got too many duties going on today. All right, so here's our issues that we're facing. One's an aging membership. Uh, two is promoting and gaining new members. The third one, which is going to be a large part of what we talked about today, is the imbalance of meals and dues payments. And then last is our club sustainability. Okay, we're going to get into these topics as we go today. So first of all, this is our membership distribution for our club. So 36% of our club is over 70 years old. 22% is over 60, or between 60 and 69, and 20% between 50 and 59. So at the very bottom there, 78% of our club is over 50 years old, okay? So that means 22% is below that. And I'm one of those that in less than two years, I'm gonna be in that 50 category, so it's gonna keep going. We don't get younger, right? So we, we keep looking at this, and we've gotta figure out what the future for the club entails. We've gotta figure out how to get younger people involved, okay? So we've been looking at the, at the, at the numbers, trying to figure out where we need to go and what we need to do. Um, and that's been, this is, this is where we're at. This is our current club distribution. I got next slide too. We haven't rehearsed this ahead of time, so we're going. Okay, so here's our existing club structure. 
We have various membership categories. You've got regular, exempt, honorary, community service, family, corporate, and we have a leave of absence that we also have some unpaid that we, that we throw in there that, that we're, we're trying to figure that out too. When you look at that whole total number, uh, the way it works is everybody on that list, except for honorary, are expected to pay the dues $50 per quarter, okay? That's the, the structure of the way the membership pays right now. The regular members, what we call regular members, prepay their bills at $157 a quarter. All the others on that list pay their bills at the door, okay, when they show up, okay, at $14 each time. <clears throat> That's the way we're set up right now. And 63% our regular members exempt are 24%, uh, which is 41, and that number exempt is for those people who, with their age plus years of service in Rotary equal 85, they become exempt eligible. Now, 41 of our members have chosen to be exempt. We still have an approximately 22, 23, somewhere around there, that are exempt eligible. They could so choose to move to exempt status if they wanted to, okay? Um, so that was the other thing we were looking at. We're trying to figure out membership categories, how to make it going forward, and how it's going to impact the people, uh, the members and, and future members as well. There we go. Okay. Yeah. okay, so I'm excited to report that I'm exempt eligible starting next year. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no. I'm one of the one. I'm one of the ten people under forty. Um, and that's of all the stats that Russ just rattled off. I think that's the one that hits home the most to people like me, people like Yana Ross and Allison Marker, and some of us um, youth who see such value in the club, uh, but are looking around the room saying, "How do we get more?" Uh, young professionals in this mix, so that we are sustainable, so that our longevity plan is healthy, so that our club's in a well-balanced and healthy status. So as membership chair, one of the things I've been working on with my committee are what are the obstacles for people under 50, because we obviously have no shortage of people over 50. So what are the obstacles for people under 50, or really under 40, becoming a member? And I'll tell you, number one is cost. It really is. Not the dues. I think the dues are reasonable for everything that the club offers, <coughs> for how often we get together, uh, for all the service projects that we do, and for the real products that we see the club uh, producing. When we talk about how much money we raise for, for polio, for the Human Trafficking Center, and for <coughs> other um, you know, shoes and coats and activities we do throughout the year. I think the value is spectacular. Um, but I'll tell you, as a person who um, has been a member for two years, when I see that quarterly statement that comes with the prepaid meals up over $200, that hits me. That hits my budget, and I think that hits the budget of a lot of young folks. So we took this approach to how do we look at a cost structure that's going to make sense when we're out there recruiting people under 40 and 50 years old. Um, Another potential barrier to membership, and this is really just a personal preference, is is it a good or bad thing that we're meeting every single week? Um, there was a survey done where some people felt strongly that that's one of the things that really keeps us together, keeps us moving forward, keeps us doing projects, keeps us accountable to things, and has that uh, amazing network capacity for us to be um, meeting every week. Um, but the numbers have shown that our regular attendance is uh, slipping down, about 10 people or so a year. So the numbers are telling us maybe that's not with how busy modern life is and how spread everyone is in their different responsibilities at work or in the community. Maybe that's not the way to go and we're exploring that. So that's another potential barrier to membership. And while we don't have a mandatory requirement to attend every week, as we know, I think there's still that pressure there. If you're gonna join, you wanna be a full part of the membership. Um, so it doesn't feel right to say, I'd love to join and I'll come every six weeks. Um, so we're looking at that. Um, another thing, value to self and value to community. That's another personal question that only each of us can answer. Do we, are we really fulfilling the service activities that we feel called to participate in by being a member of Rotary? Um, for everyone in this room, I think the answer is a resounding yes. Um, but when we're looking at recruiting broader across the community, are, are 
are our service projects and our missions really speaking to other folks that uh, may want to consider joining? And then um, the perception, no offense, this is an old club. I've, I've said this before, I joined because Joan Wagner told me to. I know, and I know for sure, and I knew what Joan says, I know for sure I'm not the first person who's joined because Joan or someone else respected in the community said, you really need to get in this club. Um, but I gave it a chance because she told me to give it a chance. It, it took that sponsorship, a mentor, to say, this is really valuable, and if you just get over here a few times, you're going to see it and buy in. And that's why I'm here. And that's why a lot of other young people are here, too. But there is a perception that Rotary is for older folks, and there's a perception that Rotary is for people that can afford it, of affluence, that are able to donate lots of money or lots of time. And that's a perception we want to work on because, again, that affects our recruitment of younger people. Um, and then finally, opportunities to contribute money and time. I think that kind of goes hand in hand. Um, with how often we're meeting, are we able to um, accurately or accurately recruit folks and say, you can be a part of this at the level you're able and comfortable to participate. So. All right. Okay, so that's the membership structure. Now let's talk about the imbalance. It comes down to the fact that our club makes more money if you don't show up to eat. <laughs> right? That's, that's the way the club is structured. And that's the way the club has always been structured, and that's the way a lot of service clubs, not just Rotary, are structured. But going forward, do we need to make a change? And that's what we're looking at doing, is trying to balance it. And so these numbers just sort of show a little bit of, of where we're at. Um, just a couple pointers. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so our dues with our members, it, this is from our current budget that we have for this year. Our dues would be $35,750, prepaid meals would be $62,800, purchase at the door we're estimating at $58,80. Now that depends on attendance of course of those that, that pay at the door. Uh, that's, that's figuring averaging 10 people paying $14 a meeting okay, at the door. Uh, the total income is $104,000. Our total budget is $123,000. So dues and meal money make up for that. And when we look at that, from meals, meals at the door and prepaid meals equal 56% of our budget. Okay? Here's where the imbalance comes in. This is our expense. Meals, expense is expected to be 55500 the actual meals. So we're collecting via meals money $13,180 more than what we pay for meals. Now, we need that money to help our club grow and keep doing stuff, but we want to get it more balanced to where meal money comes in and goes to meals and dues money goes to the other club activities. That's what we're trying to get the balance. When we talk about imbalance, that's what we're trying to get. So for those young 20-somethings, if we tell them there's a quarterly due amount, and when you are able to make it, you pay at the door, whatever that amount might be, $14, $15, most of the time they're probably going out to lunch anyway and paying that, right? So that's not that big a deal for them. The problem comes in, if you have to pay that meal in advance, and then if you can't make it, you still have to go out and buy your meal again somewhere else because you're not a rotary, that's where the, the conflict comes in with the, with the newer members, the younger people. So we want to get the meals to where we're, meal money is paying for the meals. So 56%, took it from this previous slide, 50%, 6% of, oops, wrong button. 56% of meal income versus 45% of meal expense on our budget. So that's where the imbalance comes, and we want to try to Rectify that with a plan we have. Can we talk about the next one? Yeah. Okay. You got, can we yeah. Okay, so this is the way the current structure works as far as an individual member. Regular member annual dues $200, that's $50 a quarter. Your prepaid meal is $157 a quarter, it's $628, so annually you pay $828. The other members that pay the dues $50 a quarter, $200. Meals, if you attend, if you attend all meetings, we have 42 meetings ballpark each year. Last year was 42, we're probably gonna have 42 this year. 
58, uh, $588, so your annual total is 788 What we want to do is change the structure, but try to keep that total number close, right? We don't want to make it go up a whole lot. And right now, people that pay at the door, they're not at every meeting usually, so they're really not paying that amount anyway. Okay, so in the end, that amount <clears throat> may become close to a new standard for those people to pay at the door. What we have to do is figure out how to make the change going <clears throat> forward. So that's our current structure with that of, of each individual membership. So, can you hear me? Okay, go for it. Okay, so kind of like Russ said, and we're just going to summarize it. What we want to do is create a membership structure that where the meals pay for the meals and our dues pay for our club activities. And that fundraising can pay for some extra special activities or projects that we have. Um, we want that structure to also <coughs> encourage new members. Um, you know, and this is gonna come up later, but we want things to be fair. Um, doesn't it really seem fair that people who are dedicated Rotarians are going to end up paying more by prepaying meals for the club than folks who, you know, they join, they come once in a while, they pay as they go. I think that number might actually be much less in the end. Um, so we want to create a fairness there uh, for everybody. And then like you said, we want the overall cost to stay about current. So this is not um, a secret mission to increase the dues so that our do budget doubles and we just pitched it in a different way so everyone was happy about the lunch structure. I mean, this really is how can we have a balanced budget? Because one of the things that's most concerning is we are earning income from the prepaid meals, about 13,000 projected this year. Um, but when we eat here, we have to pay for 81 meals no matter what. And we do not have 81 people coming to meetings. So and the, the immediate result is that we are paying much more to have our meals um, than we need to be. Um, that goes to a larger exploration of you know, the proper home for us um, or how we encourage uh, to get our attendance numbers back up is another balancing point. Um, but when we look at moving forward, what's the most appropriate membership structure for our club, these are the things we're thinking about. We wanted to make it fair and honorable to everybody who's been with us for all of these years, but we also want to entice new members to join without um, being uh, cost prohibitive to them. Oh. So, our plan. We want to simplify membership. Right now we have four plus categories or so. Um, we probably will no, likely, no longer likely have community service or business memberships. We're going to have um, two categories. People who pay um, ahead of time, people who want to pay at the door. And then of course our exempt is most likely still going to be in place. That magic 85? Magic 85 number will still be in place. Um, so. We're going to be on a campaign the next 90 days. I know the elections just got over, but I can't help it. So our campaign as a club for the next 90 days is that we want to hear from all of you. Because this is not about us telling you what we think should happen and then implementing it and everyone's, you know, whether we like it or not, no one likes change, even if it's a good change. Um, we want to hear from you. We want to hear what you all want to do with your particular membership. And that's going to help us determine an appropriate budget, an appropriate structure for our meals and dues. Uh, we can't promise you that dues may not adjust slightly to reflect what the membership wants, but we want to start by hearing from all of you. So in the next 90 days, and starting today, Joni, if you want to start walking around, we're going to pass out a survey. The survey has one question. If you got to choose for the next two years what you'd like to do, would you like to pay for meals ahead of time? or pay only when you come. And that's something for each of you to answer individually based on your budget, your <coughs> attendance, um, your involvement in the club. Um, and then it has a place for comments. But please, the most important thing is that you put your name on it, which is why I made a box on <laughs> top. So please put your name on it, because we want to hear from you specifically, um, and that's going to help us look at some data for the club membership and what people would like to do. Um, we're going to continue passing out these surveys, we'll email them, we'll post it on the club website, and we're going to be collecting 
<coughs> all of the answers through February 15th. Then we're going to look at that data and get a sense for what the club really wants to do moving forward with regard to our membership structure. Um, the dues may or may not adjust based on those results, um, but if they do, well, Russ and I will be back up here again to talk about why that will be if that's the case. And then our hope, our goal, is for the new membership classifications um, to go into effect, prepay, pay at the door, or your exempt status um, by April of 2020, which will be our second quarter. Okay, so this survey does not lock you into anything, okay? It gets us an idea of where we're at. You have the choice, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to continue to prepay because I don't want to have to worry about bringing money every time I come, right? So I'm going to pre continue prepay. We're probably going to figure out, to tweak it a little bit to where the prepay actually gets a little bit of a discount on the year for each meal. If you attend every meal, you wouldn't pay the full amount. You might get a little bit off total on the, on the end of the year. We haven't figured that out yet. We're going to try to figure that out. Um, what we're going to do, this survey gives us an idea of where people want to be. It starts to get numbers. Right now, we can throw numbers out there and, and estimate, but we don't know what people want to do. Once we get the survey numbers, and the name is required because we're going to do a spreadsheet with every person's name and how they voted it. It doesn't mean that's how you have to be. That's how you voted. <coughs> in February, maybe middle of January, we're going to start where you make your final selection. And at that point, you will know what the due structure is going to be, what the meal structure is going to be, so you can make an educated final decision at that point. If yours changes, that's okay. Okay? If a lot of people change, we're going to have to refigure. We'll take care of that if the time comes. But we're, we're you're going to have to give you a chance, February 15th, to be a deadline to finish out at that point. Um, and then our new classification is April 1st. Okay, so are there any questions about oh, there we go. Well, depending on what those numbers look like, um, we've already thought ahead that it's not going to be very reasonable to have 50 people standing outside the door waiting to pay. So we are hopefully going to be implementing some technology, whether that's a sticker on the back of the badge or a way to prepay an account ahead of time, kind of like a punch card where you've got so many meals you've already kind of taken care of uh, for a while. So we're going to develop some sort of system to where it's not poor Russ or whoever's at the table literally trying to take money, you know, get cash back, things like that at the door. So that could be a scanning card, um, a quick credit card run system or a debit card or something on the back of that. But we'll be working on something appropriate for that. So it's not a burden to the club. We've got that. some ideas to do. Uh, it's just a matter of figure out how to do it. One, one might be a thing where we each month when you attend, it checks you off, and at the end of the month, you receive a bill for your meals, and you pay that each month. That, that's a possibility, too. We don't know exactly how we're going to do that yet. Like Nicole said, it depends on how many people choose to, pre, uh, to pay at the door, because like you said, if, if we've got 50 people waiting to pay at the door, you're getting a new sergeant in arms. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. Two questions. Um, does it vary as far as food cost goes, depending on the venue? Yes. And uh, would it make some sense to somehow resolve the location question as part of this? Whole yes. So, so as you, as you know, we've we've had the issue of finding a permanent home, and we have found a somewhat permanent home here. In the fact that in the past six months, the last half of this year, we will have been away six or seven times. Uh, the rest of the time we've been here. The challenge with Capitol Plaza is it, we have to have a minimum 81 meals every time we have a meeting to meet their minimum cost for the for the room and the venue and all that. Okay, um, it's on my list to try to work with them to see. I don't know. That's they told me that's the way it is. We're going to work on it. We're going to figure it out. Um, but trying to find another location, it, it does make a difference. And just I'll, I'll throw some numbers to you. For example. When we're here, we're paying about $14.59 for every meal we pay. Okay? That's at 81 meals. 
when we go to tea calc, for example, we had, uh, I mean, it's a different meal. It's Sarah's, simply Sarah's catering, for example, doing the sandwiches. We're paying about $10 a meal. For the head count that we got the last two times we were at tea calc, we had 50 meals. So big cost difference. Um, so, yes. Got the other question is, uh, are the other clubs uh, having a similar uh, issue, or how do they do it? <coughs> Don't you want to speak to that? Uh, it's an international issue for many Rotary clubs. Uh, if one of you can find a permanent site for us, we would welcome that. We've had several members, I think Grant, you chaired a committee, uh, Gordon Lansford chaired a committee looking for a place. The hotels don't want us. They don't make any money from us than finding other locations. So your point is well taken. Uh, some clubs have adjusted it uh, that they have a meeting, the noon hour, but you bring your own lunch. Uh, we would need to find a little <laughs> Right. Grant? I think one of these questions ought to be, are you willing to make a reservation for your meal? I think it's only reasonable to ask people to reserve their plate. And so if so the vendor that we're dealing with knows this week we're going to have 45, and the next week we're going to have 95. And when we just show up with no notice, that's a, that's a cost. And that's that's going to be one of the things we're going to deal with is is probably going forward. Once we make that change, it will be at RSVP each week, where whether you prepay ahead or whether you pay it through, because especially if we can get either this location to lower their numbers or we find another location that we're paying for actual meals. Right now, it doesn't really matter whether we have 60 or 70 if we're here because we're paying for 81 anyway. But when we do the off-site stuff, for example, I, I, and, and we, we've got to get people trained to RSVP because a lot of people don't. i give you some numbers. We are at TCALC a couple weeks ago. We had 32 people RSVP. We had four, uh, three lunches left over out of 50. Okay, so we were close. So, uh, so yeah. So that that's one of the things we're going to have to do. And and yeah, you're right. We need to RSVP and, and get that going. Yeah. If I were to extend your comments, where could I mail this membership survey? Uh, to our club address, I guess. Our our club address. We we'll wouldn't we'll get to you. We've it's got the YWCA. Yeah. yeah. Rotary Club of Topeka at the YWCA is where our permanent location is. 225 Southwest 12th Street, 66612. 225 Southwest 12th Street. 225 Southwest 12th Street. Did you get that? Okay, Karen. I've uh, got a couple comments and then a question. Um, this is make all this presentation is wonderful and all your thoughts are wonderful. It's making all sorts of things tumble in my head. Um, I've always felt I, I love paying once or paying quarterly and coming when I can. I've always felt like the extra money went to pay for the free meals for our guests or went into the kitty and that was fine with me. Um, when I was younger, I was recruited for 30 years before I joined this club, and I neither. And the reason I didn't was because I didn't have the time and the money. I wasn't going out to eat when I didn't come. It's because I was working through lunch or I had to go to a meeting. And so some sort of maybe a half-price membership with a ticket, a punch card for our younger members might be another way to look at it. Um, I might have some more thoughts. Could You said emailing thoughts, and I hope others will as well. It, are there some email addresses you can send to us or give us right now? Yeah, we'll, we'll get them out. Yeah, okay. Okay. That way people don't have to write it out. We'll send out a blast with some information on who you can email. Okay, yes. thank you. Yep. Club Runner has everyone's phone number and email. I never had luck getting into it, but I'll try again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is one old... Our new office is at the YWCA. Is there any reason that can't be our permanent home for the uh, noon meeting as well? It's an option. It's an option. <coughs> We've had a couple meetings there. I'm not quite sure if it would hold today's attendance. We have two members giggling over here. 
<laughs> Sorry, that's that's my club. Yeah. Over 30, so that's you, you know what? I'm going to. Um, it's 104. If Larry and Stan would come up here so you could get your prizes, and I and I want to thank each one of you for being attentive. This is not fun. It is not easy. But it's been a long time. But the elephants been in the room, and we haven't talked about it. So we can have more conversation, more solutions, uh, more questions. Uh, don't hesitate to email me and let me know. I also want to thank the executive committee. Uh, Russ Cobb, of course, has spent a lot of time on this, as well as Stan, uh, Marie, Edie, and Deborah, and Nicole. She did not know when she was recruited for membership what she was getting herself into. <laughs> but I think, uh, and the board of directors have all been, we've been talking about it and trying to figure out how we can move from step A to step B. So let's give them a hand. <laughs> Mark, uh, do you have the survey results? I do. You want Thank you all for your help. Uh, so, rousing a round of applause to uh, everybody on the slate candidates who won in a landslide who was unopposed. <laughs> and per the bylaws, our nominating committee next year will be immediate past president. Uh, Joni Underwood will chair that committee. And Stan Martindale and Marie Pico and Grace Morrison and Mark DeGroff will be on the nominating committee next year. So, thank you all for your votes. We're not rid of You're not quite rid of me, but it's Joni's <laughs> job to announce next year. <laughs> okay, so now we have prizes. Okay, it's worth it for you staying here. Uh, we have five prizes to give away for those who are here. You must be present to win or find the uh, the number that you're the per person who left left next to you. <laughs> That's considered cheating, but we, uh, we, we allow that. The first is the day gravity was turned off in Topeka, another, another short-lived phenomena of modern life by Kevin Pope, a book. And that goes to... Well, like John, get a number. Number? No, no, no. no, this is my number. That's her number. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's an exempt membership. <laughs> There are more numbers than there are people, so I may pull a number that is not out there, but 81. That's the look like. <laughs> the next is a hardcore book, Do Penguins Have Knees and Other Imponderables? And that goes to number 65. One more. <laughs> Finally, make a long walk. Okay, for you wine lovers, we have a $100 wine voucher if you purchase $160 of wine. So, so the gift card is there. That is winner number 47. The teetotaler, perfect. Okay, the last two, uh, courtesy of Topeka Performing Arts Center, we have four tickets for Nick Nickelodeon Junior Live, the kids show, on uh, Tuesday, December 3rd at 6 p.m. So I know you're all coming, but maybe kids or grandkids. That goes to winner number, 64. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. The last one, my favorite, but I can't win. Two tickets to see legendary comedian Bill Engvall on uh, January 11, 2020. Here's your sign. The winner is 19. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much.
the Emerald Room. We'll see. And uh, there'll be the Ronald McDonald. We'll also be having a memorial for Andy Chandler next week and the Red Badge, Blue Badge. So we have a busy program uh, next week. Shall we all stand for the four-way test? <coughs> Is it the truth? Is it the truth? Will it